Okay, so labor force participation data set, we have loaded it in R, and we will run a binary logit model of labor force participation rate. Okay, so the R package looks like this. I have loaded R commander, which is right here. And notice that you have the same outlook in R commander. Just make it a little small so that you can actually see it fit. And let's expand it to here. What you have here is file, so you can open, close files. The edit, um, standard edit um, dialog box, data, which is very intensive and very useful. And then there's this standard statistic thing. You can summarize. Uh, contingency tables, tests for means, proportions, uh, variances, and, and then the last one is um, fit models and linear regression and multinomial logit and so on. Sports data here, right? I'm going to show you the data set. So I clicked on view data set. It's right here, right? So if you see here, uh, these are the number of observations, um, labor force participation, and it's a uh, binary variable and not in labor force and if we go down then we have in labor force right number of children under the age of five zero zero one so on and so forth kids between the age of six and eighteen they are here so this household and uh, the the woman is in labor force has three children her age is 37 years. She doesn't have a college or university degree. Her husband doesn't have a college or university degree. And um, their, the woman's wage, estimated wage, the log of her estimated wage is 0.62. And the household income in thousands without woman's income included is $21,000. Right. So I close this, I go back here, and then the first thing I do is I do the descriptive statistics. So I say statistics summarize the active data set. So 325 women are not in the labor force, 428 are working. Children under the age of five, minimum is zero, maximum is three, and on average the mean is 0.23, okay? Um, kids between the age of 6 and 18, minimum is 0, maximum is 8, okay, and the mean is 1.3 children per household for 6 and 18. The minimum age for the woman is 30 years old, maximum is 60, the average age is 42. Um, out of the total 700 odd women, 541 uh, did not have any college education, whereas there are 212 had a college education. Uh, 450 husbands did not have a college education, and 295 did. Um, the log of wages here, the average household income without women's income is 20,000, excluding women's income is $20,000, maximum is 96,000, and minimum is negative 0.029. So right there you spot something, how can you have negative 0.029? Um, I don't know, they could be in debt, but if I were to be modeling, I would take those households with less than 10,000 income out, right? Um, why 10,000? I don't know, I spoke arbitrarily, but I would do a histogram, uh, which I never did before for this data set, right? Just to see uh, the income variable, because I'm surprised it has um, a negative uh, uh, income. So I say 25 bins and uh, percentage. So very small number have uh, this, and I would say, so this is 20,000, and this is 5, 10, 15, 20. So I would exclude this, and I would treat that these as outliers, and probably treat these as outliers as well, because they are way in the tail here, way in the tail here, and, you know, subset the data between 5,000 to $65,000 and then run my models based on that. This is basically, you do it with each variable to see if there are any, any outliers. Um, and if I were to run this model, I click on statistics, then fit models, and then I use multinomial logit. 
even though I'm running a binomial logit or binary logit model, it doesn't really matter. It can be run as multinomial logit. And now, what is my dependent variable? Help me. Yes, sir. Exactly. That was coded as LFP. And see, it says factor. Do you read factor? It, so the model, I have coded it as factor because unless it were a factor, the, the, the model would not run in R. You have to code it so that the model knows, uh, the software knows that it's a factor variable. Okay. Now, uh, age of the woman, should we have it in the model? I double click it, it goes in there. Husband's college, one or zero, it's already coded as factor. Uh, so I double click it. Um, household income, uh, I will include it for now. Um, kids over the age of five, or oh, kids under the age of six, number of kids, I include this. And if the woman has college education and if her husband has college education, right? So let's run the model. Okay, there's no exponential here, right? It's just giving you the coefficients, standard error and values of standard error. Actually, if I were to be able to copy it into Excel, that part would be ex extremely helpful. So here's the coefficient. Here's the standard error. Here's the t-stat. And what we don't have is the exponential of beta, exponential coefficient. And I simply come here and I say exponential, exp, and then in parentheses, this, enter, and I've got the coefficients. Right, here we go. And I'll just get rid of the extra zeros, I don't need it. So, again, the coefficient for age is minus 0 0.06, and if I take the exponential, it's 0 0.95 for each additional increase in years of age. So as the woman is becomes older by one year, the odds of working decline by a factor of 0.95 or by 5%. And having children, an increase in the age, number of toddlers or children under the age of six, um, is associated with the decline um, by 0.24 times, or roughly 76% decline in the odds of working for a woman uh, against not working for each additional child under the age of six. Right? So we ran the model, we brought the results in Excel, we took the exponential, and here are the odds.